101 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanbic Bank. A very warm welcome to Spectrum on Radio 1. My name is Edmond Chisto, your host. The first Spectrum host after the presidential elections last weekend. Our topic tonight, what explanations can the Electoral Commission give about the countrywide complaints about the just-concluded polls? We're asking the question, did the election meet the acceptable benchmarks? Yesterday, the Electoral Commission declared Joe Erika Gutam Seveni president-elect after three months of campaigns that culminated in an election on the 18th of February, which was last Friday. Mr. Mseveni garnered 5,428,369 votes, representing 68.38%, uh, beating all the other seven candidates. Several complaints have been aired over by political parties and the electorate at large about delays to receive polling materials, the deployment of the army, missing names on the voters' register, incompetent polling officials, and the lack of transparency at the turning centers. Prior to this election, the opposition had questioned the competence of the Electoral Commission, the authenticity of the voters' register, ghost polling station, alleged ghost polling stations, and the lack of voters' cards. All these concerns were ignored, with the EC backed by government insisting that they were well prepared for the process. All reports by observer missions invited to monitor the election have indicated that many election guidelines were flouted, including opening of polling stations before the official time, poor handling of records uh, of results, uh, delays in delivering polling materials, among other challenges, linked to the management of the process by the Commission. So as we prepare for the local government elections due on Wednesday this week, we will reflect on the key challenges that emerge in the parliamentary and presidential elections to see how the Commission is handling the challenges which emerged and what explanation it can give the country on this same. Our guests tonight, Mr. Samuel Walter Vega, former presidential candidate. You're most welcome, Mr. Vega. Good evening, everybody, and good evening, listeners. Uh, we also have Mr. Willie Ochola, spokesman of the Electoral Commission. You're most welcome, Mr. Ochola. Thank you so much. Good evening, viewers and listeners. Our third guest is Mr. Bruce Cherere, president of the Uganda Law Society. You're most welcome, Mr. Cherere. Thank you, and good evening, listeners. Mr. Cherere, how free was this election? Uh, that's a loaded question. And uh, it would not be correct for anybody to give that assessment at this point. An election is a process. If you are talking about the voting, lining up, picking a ballot paper, ticking and going away, that was free, calm and peaceful. But I cannot assess the overall performance of an electoral process by just that exercise. There are several benchmarks I would need to look at in, able, in, in, in order to be able to arrive at that conclusion. Maybe I could very quickly go through some of the things that I would consider. Uh, and uh, having been an election observer team on an election observer team, uh, these are the things that we set out to look for. One, whether there was an enabling legal and the policy environment that allows full political pluralism and uh, free uh, freedom of all the candidates to participate to the full. The second one would have been uh, whether there is an independent and impartial national electoral commission or body. The third benchmark would be whether there was comprehensive there was a comprehensive national voters register which had been distributed and which is was the basis upon which these elections were conducted. Uh, the fourth would be about whether there was adequate civic and voter education to harness their effective participation in the process. Then I would also look at whether there was fair and equitable access by all contesting political parties and the candidates to the media. Was coverage well distributed? Was it equitable? 
then I would look at whether there was a legally binding code of conduct recognized by all the parties that participated in the election by which of them would undertake to accept the election results or to seek recourse exclusively through available legal means. Very well. You can begin to score for us now. Then I would also look at, during the elections, whether the voting and polling processes were transparent, free and fair, which is what I started with and I said on that one maybe it looked fine. All right, give us a very quick score. Enabling a legal policy and uh, legal and policy environment was that available? Legal and policy environment. Just before the elections started, uh, there was a purported reform of the electoral laws. Civil society, political parties, and the majority of Ugandans had indicated that there was need to overhaul the electoral legal reform, yeah. rather legal regime. Right. Uh, in my in my opinion, this yeah. was not done. Well, it wasn't done. It's not yeah, though, opinion. of course, of course, it wasn't done. The same commission that was criticised is the same commission that arranged the election. Uh, I'm coming to the electoral body. I'm talking about the electoral, uh, the environment, uh, environment, the, the electoral the and the policy involved. Yeah, the, the legal framework. framework. Go on. Yeah. yeah, in my view, we went into this election with some form of ad inadequate legal framework. Many of the things that people yearned to see being done to reform the law were not done. And what was done was just a cosmetic process for, for people to think there was a reform of the electoral laws. So on that one, I think we scored poorly. Right. Though, of course, I could say we still had the basics within the current uh, legal Framework. And let's go on to the next one, independent and impartial EC. A national electoral body that is impartial and uh, independent, of course, you recall everybody was crying foul. They were saying no. Well, you talk to us, we've heard what they said about yeah. you from the law society. Uh, we did not think that with the level of uh, uh, pessimism yes. and mistrust that had been expressed by the population, the that uh, the current body should have continued. Okay. And uh, I recall at one time I even challenged the commission, yes. the chairman, and I said, look, people don't seem to have confidence in you yes. and your team. Why don't you resign and give room to an impartial and independent body? Let's that was not done. Number three, comprehensive but, national voters register. Let me say this also. Yes. It was not done, but the candidates still went ahead and gave in themselves to this so-called or at that time uh, regarded as an, a non-impartial yes. body which was not thought to be independent. So the blame shift from the EC to the candidates? In my view, they had they a choice. It. They endorsed it. The best thing to have been done at the point was for mm. them to not to go and vote. Not to go into this electoral process headed by this body whose confidence they did not enjoy. <laughs> Number three, we'll discuss that in detail. The National Voters Register. The National Voters Register, uh, at first it appeared a lot had been done. Yes. Electronic is the processes had, had been uh, applied. Yes. And we were meant to be assured that the, the register is comprehensive. Then later? But during our observation of the election process, Problems arose. Okay. Many people were turned away. Uh, the adequate civic education. Adequate civic education. I think this was not done effectively. All right, number five. Let's because move. I try to speed it up. I, and I can only say, look at the number of spoiled votes. Yes, four percent. That's One a count. lot of votes for right. any election. Right. And also, the voter turnout. <clears throat> Yes, 50, it's just about just under sixty percent. Under sixty percent, right? Very low. So that is, in my view, not good enough. Fair and equitable uh, access by all uh, to the media. Uh, 
to a large extent, I think uh, uh, the candidates seem to have fair access, fair access, access. Uh, uh, except of course a few there, were, there were a few incidences of of, of discontent. Uh, but uh, I, I would want to believe that on that point we we'll give it to them. High. Yeah. Apart from a few radio stations where generators fail to work, very quickly legally binding code of conduct. Did you say generators failing? Well, to in one place or two, the generator didn't work, and uh, the candidate was turned away. They locked the place and went away. Generators uh, turn into Let's not padlocks? launch a commission of inquiry into that. Let's go into something else. <laughs> a legally binding code of conduct. Did we have that? Very quickly. We did not have that. And that was very unfortunate. I thought to the body that had been put in place to bring political parties together and the electoral commission uh, and the, the donors uh, who had done a lot to ensure this... Uh, by the time we went to the elections, we did not we have a code have of conduct. Neither was the law that had been 